Hello and welcome to the uh, Play 21 Creative Gaming Festival. We're here today in Hamburg, but we're also online in the Play Valley. And uh, there's a lot of stuff to discover and our topic is Restart Together. And Restart Together, as you know, is about the past and the future. It's about uh, proximity, distance, isolation and uh, human... Oh, that's too complicated. <laughs> Drop it. Uh, communities. So. Um, as you may notice, I'm talking English, and if you're not understanding English, you can go to this uh, link here. Das sollte ich vermutlich auf Deutsch sagen, <laughs> wenn ich Englisch kann. Uh, der schaut einfach hier auf diesen Link uh, und uh, gibt diesen Code ein und dann uh, versteht er mich auch wieder. Okay, so, back to English. Yeah, uh, so this show we're having right now is called uh, Place Next Top Companion. And as you see, I have to warm up a little bit with the uh, green screen we put up here. It's a completely new wall. I hope you like it. And uh, we prepared something really amazing for you today. So this show is all about companions. And companions are a really important part of this whole topic of restarting together. If you may know video game history, uh, video games and companionship, they have a really long relationship. Like the first consoles, the first games we had, uh, they were really produced in a way that you have to play them together with somebody, right? Two controllers, multiple controllers, old arcade machines. And uh, over the time, games got better in actually, uh, you know, leaving away this human part and presenting you with actual characters which you can look at, which have not pixels, uh, but written lines, sound, or they are actually actors right now who perform characters. So this is really interesting uh, to see. And uh, because there is such a long history with those video game companions, characters who carry things for you, do things for you, guide you, but also put you in a narrative situation or maybe just look nice and give you something uh, because you can see yourself or because your character is only from the back or in the first person pers uh, perspective. So uh, this show is about honoring all of those, um, but we also want to find the best one, right? So that's what this uh, show is about. And uh, we have multiple characters. We have some guests, which we'll see in a minute. And uh, they all brought a character with them, which I know. Uh, and we also have a character which is uh, chosen from the um, from the companion gallery we have in the Play Valley. So you can go there in the forest of companionship and uh, check out all those amazing companions. Also, there are some other ways where you can interact, like uh, with some questions we have in between. So we want to know your expertise as well. So the first question for the audience, for example, would be, um, what's the first companion you remember? And you can type this in the chat either in YouTube or if you go in the Play Valley uh, left from the stage, there is a scout from our play team. You can either message this person or just directly talk to it and then we'll have your answers a little bit later in the show. So, but for now, I would say we say a warm welcome to our guests, which we have. So let's see them. Aha, there they are. Great. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, we have amazing guests with uh, some very interesting viewpoints on this companion. So at first we have uh, Alistair Etchison here. He's an indie developer with, uh, who, who makes alternative controllers and very performative works uh, who guide people together. So th they have to do something really crazy. And uh, it's also... Uh, very much about chaos, right? So, so is chaos this important for your work, really? Is there something to like in chaos? Oh yeah, no, I, I, I'm a big fan of chaos. I don't, I don't like things to be ordered. I like, I like the creativity that comes out of the unexpected. You know, that's a big thing for me. Right. Okay, this will be interesting. Then uh, we have uh, Jenny Vergin. Uh, Jenny, you have multiple things <laughs> to talk about. So basically, uh, this list, right? You're a uh, European media scientist. Uh, you did a uh, project manager for Womanize. You're also a funding manager for uh, innovative audiovisual content, like with a focus on games in the Medienboot Berlin Brandenburg. Uh, but you're also a streamer uh, with uh, two, 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 into indie, uh, two into indie. That's a lot of things. How do you manage all those personas? Oh, that's a good question. So um, 
I try to find enough time for everything. Um, but I have so many other hobbies like drawing and everything. So um, my biggest wish will be that we have more week times in a week. So for me, I want to have 10 or so. That would be nice in the future. So maybe we can manage that. <laughs> Ooh, hopefully. Yeah, well, let, let's invent something. I think Alistair will come up with something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so then, other side, uh, we have uh, Jessica Kathman. Kathman? Uh, Kath? Yeah, great. Damn, damn it. <laughs> ah, I messed it up. Okay. Uh, Jessica is a psychologist and uh, she's uh, teaching uh, psychology to game designers, uh, is also a freelance writer. Uh, and you're giving workshops and lectures about it, uh, but you're also a podcaster in be behind the screens and talking about all of that. It's also a lot. Um, what brought you from practicing to sharing all that knowledge? <laughs> That's a good question. I think it's something <coughs> that really is in me. I really love teaching and talking to people and sharing my knowledge and yeah especially a podcast and those teaching things um, for the game designers is yeah just a great opportunity so i really really enjoy that <laughs> nice uh yeah sharing knowledge will be a topic in this uh, show i guess <laughs> so uh christopher uh, Christopher Wayman, uh, you're a queer feminist performer and uh, playmaker, which I find is a very nice description. Uh, you're working with kids and young adults uh, most of the time. You're part of the uh, Fundus Theater, Theater of Research. Uh, you're also uh, part of a team of curators for the, um, I translated it a little bit, the Hamburg Festival of Performance Art. That's correct. <laughs> Um, sure. And uh, you're mainly interested in uh, audience participation uh, and the uh, post-digital society, which are really big words. And you also were the performer of our Krinke last year in this uh, very interactive uh, theater play. So uh, what's new in your interactive <laughs> theater performance days right now? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. It's, um, well, um, co Corona is still going on, but... <laughs> Um, but we started working with children again, which is very exciting with children, like real children, not on in the, in the screen, but in front of my face, wearing masks with the children. And actually, we are, um, uh, we've created a workshop where you can create your own virtual reality theater play in two hours. Like, Whoa, okay. You come in, come into a to, to other stage and... Uh, and at the end, you're going to put up your VR glasses and you're going to see your own, your own VR play. Only for children. Right. Sadly. But those VR glasses are amazing because uh, you can also view exactly those VR glasses, uh, thanks to you, uh, in the stage here in the exhibition where you can try out some of our nominees we have there. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, that's very interesting perspectives, but I think uh, your perspectives, your expertise, how does it relate to those virtual characters now? So, so what kind of um, things are you looking for in a companion you meet in a computer game? Who wants to start? Yeah, I'm happy to go first. All right. So, um, yeah, so, I, I mean, for me, what's really important, you know, I'm I'm looking at this from a kind of gameplay perspective. You know, I'm interested in, you know, what does this what does this character do for the player interaction? You know, the your minute to minute interactions with the games, are they going to cause you to interact with the game in a way that is different than if they weren't there? You know, are you going to be. Uh, planning strategies differently or are you going to be moving differently um that to me is the really exciting thing i'm kind of looking for okay cool then uh, let's have your category there perfect <laughs> okay who wants to have such amazing things there as well maybe i'm okay. the next one <laughs> so um i was looking for um story impact why? Because um, there are so many nice companions outside. Um, but I was thinking, okay, which one really have impact of the main story and not just a bit, so a bit more than usual, because I think a companion has to have a big impact even in the story, not only in gameplay. That's why I choose this category for when you are a good companion, you have to be impact. 
yes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, well, yeah, and then let's continue, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought as a psychologist, people might expect some like psychological approach to the topic. So um, because I work in psychotherapy or I have worked in psychotherapy, which is also somehow kind of about emotional support, especially in tough situations, I thought, well, a lot of games throw us in difficult or tough situations in games and give us companions to get through those situations. So I thought maybe like in a hero's journey where we also have some com company. And so when you get lost or when you are frightened, it's important to have someone with you who can like guide you or yeah give you an idea or you can share like also emotional baggage not only like equipment you <laughs> can't carry anymore maybe also emotional baggage and yeah so that's why i go for emotional support okay nice there we go and christopher well it's it's kind of a casting show so it's i'm not looking for friends right i'm only looking for lovers I'm looking for partners in crime. I need the drama in my life. If I have a companion and if I have to save the world with him or her, it has to be dramatic. And I have to hate him or hate her and love him and lo love her. I have to ship myself with this person or creature or whatever. Yeah, I need to write very weird fan fiction about it. And this is the most important part, drama in a companion. Nice. <laughs> okay. So, play into action story impact, emotional support, and drama. That's our categories for today. And uh, I would say, let's view the first character which we have. And that is... So, <laughs> our first character is uh, Nana. And uh, Nana is a companion character of Popo, uh, which is a player character. And it's one of uh, the uh, duo characters uh, I don't actually know if there are multiples, maybe it's the only one, uh, in uh, Super Smash Brothers. It's a fighting game where you fight against others player, uh, other players, it's really fun. Um, but here you play just this one character and uh, Nana helps you with fighting. So she has a very strong attack. Uh, both have a narrative background of being ice climbers, that's why they're you know, uh, looking like this, they uh, are famili uh, familiar with um, cold environments, and because of that, they have like like safe lines. So if you're falling out of the screen, uh, the character can uh, get <coughs> the character can get you back. Um, and uh, what else? Um, yeah, they they're stronger together, obviously. And if you're alone, then that's a little bit bad. So um, that's the character. And uh, now we have to talk about it. <laughs> I think, um, yeah, so with those categories, that could be interesting. So it, it, it's a very gameplay character, right? So l let's start with play and action, maybe. Yeah, that's right. So, I mean, Nana was, uh, was uh, my pick. That was, uh, Nana was my suggestion. Um, and I think, like, so in Super Smash Brothers, the way they play, and they are the only characters who work like this, where instead of picking one character to fight as, you pick two characters. And so Popo in the purple is controlled directly by your button inputs. Nana in the pink is an AI controlled character who follows you around, has the exact same movements as you. And a lot of the time will just do the same things as you, but just on a slight delay, like half a second later. Uh, so you'll run around and she'll follow you. But sometimes you'll get knocked apart. And that's when the AI really takes over because she tries to get back to you or she tries to fight the enemies who are far away from you. Um, and, and I think what makes her interesting from a kind of gameplay perspective is the way that you play the game is different depending on whether Nana is with you or whether Nana is, uh, is separated from you. And as an opponent, you have another interesting decision which comes in, which is, do I want to focus on, you know, the main character being, you know, Popo being controlled by the player? Or do I want to focus on getting rid of Nana because I know that without her to help help the player out, that player is going to be, you know, less powerful. It's not going to get 
two hits in instead of one. It's not going to be able to recover back onto the stage when it falls off because Popo needs Nana in order to throw him back onto the stage if he falls off. Right. That sounds like a, a lot of drama, Christopher. <laughs> There's a yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. I'm just have eaten a popcorn. Um, sorry. <clears throat> sure. No, there's a lot. I, I, I see the tension. I see the the moment on the cliff, and you don't know if to sacrifice her or save her, or will she save you, or is he just badly behaving and you want to kill her off? Maybe is this a possibility? Is there a tactic behind killing her off? Maybe you... is there is there one, Alistair? I, I mean, you, you can't. That? You can't actively kill her off, uh, you know, only... I mean, I guess you could trick her into falling well, off, but I admit well. there, isn't, there isn't a kind of a functionality for that, you know. I think it is, it is always advantageous to have, uh, you know... But just imagine, I'm, 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 on a, I'm on, on a Smash tournament, which is probably the most romantic situation yeah. where I can play with her. Uh, and she's the main reason why I'm losing... So I have to say, so I have to give her a message. Can I push her off the cliff? Like, <laughs> unfortunately, I don't think the AI is uh, is quite so receptive to that. I think yeah. she only understands. I want to be near. I want to be near the player. I want to help out the player. Oh my god! This makes it more. Diverse. Imagine that. Imagine I. I just. I can't even begin to play with her because she's so bad. But she still loves me. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> Oh, also, right. imagine the very, situation. Yeah. Imagine the situation where you know where Popo and Nana have been separated. Yeah. The, yeah. the opponent listening. has managed to separate the two of you, yes. and oh, you, as a player, could go. You can see Nana is going to fall off the stage. Mm -hmm. You could jump off the stage to activate your. It's your belay attack that you throw mm -hmm. up a rope, and the two of you kind of help each other climb back up onto the stage. And you could run back to try and rescue her, but you know that you would be putting yourself at risk in the process, because in order to go off the stage to get her, you need to jump off the stage as well. So there is that level of kind of drama comes into it. Hmm, I see. And um, Jenny, what would you say about the story they have, you know, being ice climbers? Is there some kind of, I mean, it's Smash Brothers. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I was thinking about the general ice climber story. And as far as I remember, the second player can jump in and play Nana in the original game. So there is, um, let me say, when you play together, there is a big story impact because the person next to you is the one who is playing Nana. If you play as solo, you just, um, as the other ones discussed in, um, yeah, in Smash Brothers, they are always together. They can't do anything with the, without the other one. So it's it's kind of an impact, I would say, mm -hmm. yeah. Hmm, okay. And, uh, you know, emotionally losing these characters, the situation we just heard, what, what do you think, Jessica, about it? Yeah, it's a difficult question. I thought, like, um, Nana might be some sort of yeah, mirror, like, and that's something we also use sometimes in psychotherapy to see how you are behaving to like when we as therapists act like some kind of mirror so that might be some therapeutic aspect <laughs> in this whole thing um yeah i think it depends whether it's um, hard to lose her or not as we have heard from christopher maybe you want her off the edge <laughs> <laughs> who knows hmm, i see okay so we heard some perspectives, but now you have to decide. It's, uh, you know, the time for deciding things now. And uh, for, th for this specific part, we have some uh, interesting music going on, I think. Uh, huh? Can I use it here? Oh, there we go. Uh, deciding. Deciding music. Okay. Uh, so, so each of you now, uh, you have four roses, and you can give those four roses. More roses is better. And, um, you know, if... Uh, Jessica, for instance, you say, ah, the emotional support uh, could be there, but could be better. You may give two roses uh, or more. Uh, so less is less for your category, right? Okay. So who wants so to go we first? Have maximum four uh, roses per character. Yes. Okay, great. 
I don't want to waste any roses, so. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, for, for for each character, so. Okay. Right. That's you great. can give four now and four for the next one and four for the next one. Great, great. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but yeah, maybe you want to start. How many roses do you want to give? Oh my God, I. <laughs> I guess I would give her one rose. One rose. Okay. There we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> okay, uh, Christopher, the drama, you were quite into it. How many roses would you give uh, for I, this drama? Sure, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of possible roses, but I have to also say what I hate about her mm -hmm. is that you can't play her, because she's exactly the copy of the male one, and she's wearing the better outfit, and you can't play her. This is the most dramatic thing about the situation. So it's such a typecasting of a woman, so where we save her, so a man and sacrifice her, etc. So let's say, out of possible four roses for this very dramatic scenario, minus this sexism, two roses. Okay. Did he put them here? <laughs> oh, this works. Uh, okay, uh, Jenny, what about you? Yeah, I think I give two roses because she has an impact and um, Super Smash, Smash Bros. isn't the most known story game but the the true story is you can't be without the other one and i think that's one of the biggest impacts that you can have in super smash brother so let me say i give two all right two roses for you <laughs> and alistair i mean obviously i'm I'm biased, Nana was my pick, and you know, I picked Nana because, you know, she appeals to my sensibilities, I think the impact on gameplay, you know, is huge, and the decisions that she causes, for example, when you might lose her, are massive, um, and it's not just that, you know, because I main these characters in, uh, in, in Melee, but, you know, it's partly because of that, so for me, it's four roses. <laughs> okay, four roses, full head. <laughs> All right, so... How many do we have? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine roses. Nice. Somebody put this down. I forgot my pen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, great. Um, now there's a little uh, between thing, um, and we can have this, uh, we can keep this interesting music. Uh, so, before we ask the, uh, the audience as well, uh, what is the first companion you remember? And, uh, voice from the sky, do we have any? comments on that yes, we do it's oh. it's yoshi uh-huh yoshi sure and yoshi oh <laughs> and it's also benju and kazooie nice and yeah that's pretty much it okay but also <laughs> i i want to add the information that you can actively kill nana but without nana popo is useless somebody wrote <laughs> it's always like that if you have a strong woman <laughs> mm, there we have it. Uh, wh what is your first companion you can think of? Uh, so, uh, myself, it was uh, Tails. Yeah, yeah. I, I grew up a Sonic fan. I mean, I'm, I'm wearing the T-shirt right now sure. with Sonic on it, not <laughs> Tails on it. But uh, growing up, I was the youngest of two brothers. And being the younger brother means that you are always playing as Tails. So Tails has a very special, you know, affection for me. Cool. I'm the old older sister, but I played um, Tails as well because my little brother wanted to be Sonic all the time. So, but that's also my first companion character. Hmm. Do you have you? Uh, do you have one as well? Yeah, for me it was Ulora from Dungeon Siege, which is um, an RPG. Um, from the early 2000s and you meet her at the end of the first real dungeon and it was such a relief for me and I was so excited to have her in my party so it's Ulova. <laughs> Great, I have to check this out. And Christopher? I think it's, a, it's, 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 it's one of the orcs from War from the first Warcraft and I can vividly see there was almost a little a small uh, picture portrait of the um, of the minions, actually, I don't know if it's a companion, but of the <laughs> orcs, and if you click them a lot, they made, they made uh, stupid commentary and sounds, and I loved that as a kid. So I can remember that, some some orc from Warcraft. Wow. 
Okay, wild selection. <laughs> All right. So uh, the next question uh, for the audience in the next round uh, round is: uh, What's the most beautiful companion to you? So write it in the chat. We uh, see that later. Yeah. Okay, let's continue with the next companion. So let's see it. We have <laughs> Atreus. And uh, Atreus is the companion character in the latest God of War title, God of War Ragnarok. And uh, after, you know, a long journey with Kratos, the God of War, he's like a, this wild character and, and he's really, you know, strong. And now he's a little bit older and suddenly he has a son, this uh, very slender, good looking uh, guy here. Um, That's the description. I'm just uh, <laughs> reading it. Um, uh, he has a skill set you can upgrade. He can get better with the bow. I, I guess you can train him. Um, but he also has some skills which are necessary to, to progress to the uh, narration of the game. Without it, you, uh, you can do it. Um, and yeah, both are living in uh, Midgard, which is a very uh, mythical uh, land. And it's very cold. I guess, <laughs> in this environment. So, um, yeah, some four uh, is probably a good idea to have. So, um, father-son relationship, um, which is very relevant for the story. Jenny, what do you say? What, what's this character about so the with the story impact? The story impact is super huge because without him, you can't even finish the game, of course. And he has his own journey through the game. Of, so he is not even, you can say he's the second main character somehow because he has impact in, inside um, side quests, but he also has his own adventure. He is rising, he is learning, he is making mistakes and um, he's always be there. So there are some small scenes and cutscenes where he isn't, but he is always be there. And um, in the end, I don't want to spoil, but it's it's important that he is in the end there for the story. And without him, it's not going to happen. So I would say he is a really huge thing when you sing about game, um, story impact in God of War. Mm -hmm. um, for me, one interesting uh, thing would be, you know, it's a, it's a son and you're playing as the father. Uh, so how is the emotional support going on in this relationship here? Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, I was thinking about, well, of course, you also see in psychotherapy that the journey or the development of your own child does a lot to yourself. So on this emotional level and yeah, generally spoken, I think the journey of any other character can be important for your own development. So yeah, I guess um, there's a lot going on <laughs> in this journey. And yeah, I think he can also be um, an emotional support for his father, but unfortunately I don't own a console, so I couldn't play um, God of War. So I'm not really, really um, yeah, known to the story. Mm. But do we see this often that you that you have a that the a, a child as a companion and that the player has to so somehow care for it? Depends, I would say. First um, game I think about is uh, a Plague Tale Innocence. There mm. you play the older sister of um, a very young boy, Hugo, <laughs> and um, you have to care for him. So I guess we sometimes have siblings, but I'm not sure whether we have um, like a father-son relationship very often. Mm. At least for now, I can't think of any other games. I'm sure I'm missing a lot right now. Maybe, but uh, yeah, at least in those big titles, it's uh, something really cool to have. Um, mm -hmm. And that, that's also something, I mean, uh, the, the God of War series, it's basically known for its brutal action and suddenly we have those uh, quieter tones and yeah. you know there is not just a drama in between those two characters but also you know in the style of the game itself uh, so so christopher what would you say about um yeah the, <laughs> the drama in this i character? mean i'm <laughs> I, i i work with children i make dramatic pieces with yeah. children and for a reason because there's the most dramatic energy 
Um, how old is he? Do we know that? I don't think that it's uh, no. I don't think that they mention it in the game, but he's quite young. But not he's not six or so. I think he <clears throat> can be. I don't know ten. Well, yeah, ten is a great age for dramatic purpose. I can say that. So, so this is this is this is very good. No, I, li I, li I like the idea of um, of working with 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 a, chill, with a child to create dramatic pieces. No, imagining that I'm not just making fiction with them, but going into into a war and killing gods with a ten year old. That sounds very dramatic. I'm, I'm already stretching out. <laughs> I mean, like. Can he die? Will he die? Can I? I can't even imagine a scenario in my head where, like Nana, I want to let him die. I always want to save him. The poor ten-year-old. So he is eleven. I watched. He's eleven. Uh, just uh, okay. ask so, Google. So, so it's, yeah. well, it's also close to puberty. So you you have to imagine if you if you take too much time, you not only have to kill uh, the gods, you always has to somehow survive his puberty. So there's also this dramatic time frame in it. I love it. It's dramatic. I think it's very, very there's a lot of tension in there. Yeah, and I, I think maybe I can add something. So sure. he his story is he was really sick when he was young. Oh, no. So he's no. always, you know, they are always fighting about um there's uh, one thing when he he um he told his father I found the deer. Uh, I proceed myself, I proved myself, and I haven't been sick for a long time, and it's always, you know, um and now he isn't he isn't that sick but sometimes you you can feel it and they're always talking about it and their relationship changing from he's i think in the beginning he's always saying sir to his father and in the end he's calling his father so it's just like you know yeah keeps getting yeah. more um, and more dramatic yeah <laughs> well, very well very well Okay, and um, I also heard uh, that he's quite hot-headed. So, so I would be interested in, in uh, if he is somehow, you know, not following orders. If you can order him around at all, um, but at the same time, it sounded strange that you can, you know, upgrade his skill set uh, like, you know, a thing, and then he does things. So, like for the player interaction, Alistair, uh, where would you say is the balance there? I think. I mean, I think that is an interesting um, thing. I mean, so. I mean, I think in terms of the sort of meaningful whether or not they are there or not, in terms of what you do, being able to make a choice over how you upgrade this character, how this character develops, even if, you know, from a kind of, you know, you know, narrative perspective, there's possibly something about strange about you being the one making that those decisions for him. But from a gameplay decision, it makes a lot of sense to have a kind of, you know, you feel a connection to, um, you know, an impact of what you're doing. You know, you will choose, um, you know, what that character can do, how they can interact with the world based on things like, oh, what am I weak at? What am I, you know, struggling with? Um, I guess a question I have from a kind of gameplay perspective, um, now I've not played it the whole way through, so I don't know how it develops, um, but I understand, you know, you can... You can order the character to fire his bow um, at specific things, and then, but you also need to order him to kind of gather the arrows and things. Um, one thing I've had as an issue with kind of combat in sort of companion characters in other games is I don't like the feeling that they are doing the fighting for me. You know, I like I don't like the AI to do the fighting for me. I, you know. Um, and is there a sense, like, as the game goes on, is that something that becomes part of it? You know, can you just sit the controller down and let Atreus do the work for you? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you definitely <laughs> would die. So I think you can... There are some um, skill points you can maximize things you do together, like combinations. Of course, it's then he's doing it. But um, otherwise, no, you die all the time. So he isn't able to fight alone because, yeah, you're the strong father. Sure. Anyway, so do, you, yeah. do you have to make an active effort to protect him? Like if he is in danger, like if there's monsters attacking him instead of you, you need to go in and no, rescue him? As far as I remember, he, no, he, he isn't the one 
you have to watch out because he's dying and then it's game over. No, you, you can fight and he is protecting himself. But in cutscenes and everything else, it, of course, it isn't. Then you have to protect yes. <laughs> him sometimes or he is uh, trying to protect you. And yeah. All right. Wow, this is a very complex character. And uh, with that, I would say it's decision time again. So um, let's hear the music and uh, your verdict, of course. So da -da, there we go. <laughs> so um, yeah, we talked about uh, this relationship first. Uh, so uh, the, the emotional support of this character, Jessica, how much roses would you give? So children shouldn't be uh, um, or shouldn't be yeah, in the position to um, emotionally support their parents. <laughs> so that's um, another thing I just wanted to add. So um, I would give him two roses. Okay. Nice. Um, and uh, it's, you know, there's this uh, difficult decision between um, helping this character, yeah, well, you don't have to help them, uh, you have to help them in the cutscenes, but not during gameplay. You can update this character. What would you say, Alistair, for the gameplay? I think, I mean, there's interesting things going on there, and I think the upgrading thing is quite an interesting thing. Um, I, um, I guess, you know, I, you know, to me, he strikes me from a gameplay perspective as, you know, good, you know, a good addition, but I think the, you know, not having you know the risk to deal with or you know something like that you know that would add some kind of moment-to-moment -moment strategy that would make it kind of interesting so i think i'm happy to give a you know as a baseline for you know who everyone else from now on is compared to i'm happy to give him two roses okay two roses um and of course, there's a lot of uh, drama going on. This is a sick kid, uh, you have to uh, look out, but you know, then also he's a demigod. And uh, what do you say, Christopher? Well, we didn't talk about if, if I like him or not. We just talked about the basic idea of, of a sick kid we have to save. I think they had to play this game to to know maybe, maybe he's a human. I, so maybe, maybe he sucks and I don't like him and I don't care. We haven't discussed that. So he didn't I, I had know no dramatic in the beginning that he is... okay. So let's so I can't give four roses, but I, but I will give three roses and I think I'm gonna play it and maybe send the <laughs> the missing rose if I like him. Three if roses. it's a brat, I don't. And Jenny, uh, you said uh, without this character there is no story. So what would you say about the story pack? Yeah, I I, I think it's super high. Uh, compared to other AAA games, the companion here is super, super, super important. So that's why I would give him four roses. Um, yeah, because four he has roses. really a huge impact in all the cutscenes, all the scenes, all the gameplay. So right. story-wise, he's really nice. And you love and hate him, I can tell you, Christopher, you will see. <laughs> Okay, sounds amazing. So before we go to the next companion, uh, we asked before what is the uh, what was the correct person most beautiful? What's the where is it? What's the most beautiful companion to you? Right. So do we have something in the comments? Yeah, we do. So there is like a claptrap from the Borderlands series, and Trico from the Last Guardian, and also we have Pirate Captain Tetra from Zelda Wind Waker and we also get Aerith from Final Fantasy 7. Yeah, so lots of beautiful companions. Nice. Yeah, your beauty is something in the eye of the uh, beholder. Is the beholder? I don't know. Um, do, do you have uh, some characters as well where, where you would say, yes, this is a beautiful character which you love to play with? That sounds wrong. Oh. I think well, should I jump in? I guess I'm on the left, so going left to right. <laughs> Go ahead. So, I, I mean, I think, it, you know, if you're... It, obviously, you know, beauty can have many different meanings. I think for me, you know, uh, beauty is, you know, if you see it, it makes you smile, you know? And that's that's very important. It is, you know, something is beautiful. When you see it, it makes you smile. And when I used to play Wii Fit... And we would have the Wii Fit in the house. And when I used to go jogging, 
I would see I would see uh, my friends and my family. They would be jogging with me. They'd be jogging in the other directions. And every time I saw, you know, and my mom was doing We Fit at the same time as I was. And and then uh, I would, uh, you know, I'd at, at dinner time I say, oh, I was jogging today. I saw you when I was out jogging, and it was always a fun thing. And seeing my mom in We Fit always made me smile, and that always made me new. No, I knew that we'd have something to talk about at dinner time. So I would say uh, my mum in We Fit is uh, <laughs> is the most beautiful companion. It's oh, also my oh, 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 oh. Uh, answer. Alistair's mom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any more additions for beautiful characters? <laughs> uh, for me, it was Tris Marigold from especially The Witcher 3. She's just a beautiful woman. And there's um, one part in the game where you go to like a ball and you wear masks and she just looks stunning there. <laughs> yeah, so I'm thinking game. of Pokemon, to be honest, because just when I was a kid, I really loved Evoli and I can't show you because of the, but I have one in my room, still the one I had gifted as a child and I think I was always playing with Evoli and he was my biggest companion ever so that's my cutest oh. <laughs> oh. definitely cute okay so Christopher did I understand correctly your favorite one is Alistair's mom <laughs> nice <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, nice. So uh, for the next question for the audience is what's the most annoying thing in companions? All right, okay. Um, let's continue with the third companion we're having. So let's see it. It's a uh, mom from uh, Rakuen. And uh, this is a companion character. You're playing as the boy, and this is your mom. So th that's that relationship. Um, and uh, mom can tell you a lot, uh, a lot of things, like what to do next uh, or what you can do next. Uh, she's apparently also very good at singing. Um, she can hold your hand and guide you to uh, darker areas. She's a very good storyteller. Uh, when you have some fear, she invents uh, a very great you know, story can take you through an adventure, make things easier. And uh, see, uh, uh, she also supports you through a very difficult time in a hospital. So there's a lot of support going on there. Uh, Jessica, what would you say about this character for emotional support? Yeah, exactly. Um, I chose this character and maybe it's good to say a little bit about the game. It's, yeah, you already mentioned it. It's called Rakuen. It's quite unknown, so it might be wise to add some information. It's, yeah, as you said, about this boy who is just called Boy, um, who stays in hospital right now. We don't know why until the very end. Then we yeah get an idea what is going on but um, we don't know like the whole game um, and yeah as it always is in um, hospitals not everyone leaves hospital so that's one thing that really adds to the drama aspect of the game because we uh, um, we have like two worlds in the game we have the hospital on one hand and like um, this magic world on the other hand with a magic forest and the guardian of the forest who can grant wishes and you always um, yeah you can go into those two worlds and those two worlds are somehow intertwined you could say like you meet the alter egos of um, the characters you know from hospital in this magic forest and you have to yeah help them with their own struggles and learn something from them and yeah, so mom um, is a very important character in guiding us through this difficult time, like it's also on a symbolic level of this difficult time of um, a life threatening condition you are living with and going through all those, um, yeah, scary things that you encounter in hospital. Mm -hmm. It also sounds a little bit like uh, escapism. Yeah, poet. yeah, yeah, on the one hand, Yes, and on the other hand, it's um, like some 
different kind of dealing with things it's you're you're in touch with all those people and all their struggles and your own struggles like the whole time but on another level maybe in like um, a fantasy world what yeah which makes something easier mm -hmm. so christopher a lot of struggle that's like keyword for drama <laughs> We have to imagine um, playing the mother or being the mother. And I think this is probably the most dramatic situation you can be if your child is uh, sick, very, very sick. Uh, Needy dying, she also has to play support, a support role and a care care role. So this is, uh, God, I'm already. Um, I already see the fan fiction. And I, always, and I think the, the greatest potential in this character is because it, it sounds like she's always just a part of the game and, and she's doing her own um, normal living, probably going to work, whatever. And this gives a lot of potential for fan fiction for what, what the hell she's doing outside the hospital. Maybe she's fighting a big pharmacy and fighting for cheaper drugs. And, and still doing the household and dating and being nice in the hospital. I, as, as, yeah, I think there's a lot of potential for fan fiction because so much is open to, to your imagination and it's about death and it's a mother. It's a mother. So it's nothing is more dramatic than the mother as a role. I mean, um, yeah, sure. Jessica, very good nomination. I can totally see that. And she's good looking. Thanks. I guess. Yes, yes. So, and she is voiced by Laura Shigihara, who oh, also in, like God. designed the whole game. Like, so that's a like, big plus. <laughs> oh, I can see a game on your list now. <laughs> um, I never cried so much uh, playing any game ever before and ever after. <laughs> oh, okay. It's hmm. really dramatic. <laughs> it also looked nice. I was ever I was surprised uh, uh, researching it. Great title. So, um, but at the same time, there's a lot of guidance going on, like uh, uh, like gameplay wise. Uh, you she invents stories, and you have to go there, and it's a companion character which basically forms the world for you, and um, you know you need to follow a lot, I guess, in this game. Probably you're doing something uh, as well, of course. But you know, gameplay wise, play interaction, uh, Alistair. What's your take on that? Yeah, well, I mean, I so I don't know the game. This is, um, but it sounds absolutely fascinating. Um, I mean, certainly, you know, quite, you know, impactful as a game. Um, could you tell me a bit more about, you know, yeah, what is it? How do you interact with your mother? You know, what does she do? So most of the time you are just playing like any other game. So you can, yeah. Um, go with your character anywhere you want and mom just follows you or she's not always visible. Um, I mean, you can also uh, always um, press some button and ask her anything, but um, she's not always like visible. Um, yeah, but there are some situations where she uh, yeah, really has to be there to lead you or guide you through um, some yeah some parts of the world because they would be too scary otherwise and then she grabs your hand and really leads you through that so you can do a lot by yourself but you have always the sense of okay I'm not alone and there's some very funny parts in the game it's a very dramatic game on the one hand but also a very light-hearted and very funny game on the other um, where she has yeah like just very funny roles as well and can she tell, like, you know, through the way you play with her, can she tell if you are, you know, you know, if you are having a strop or if you are, you know, or if you're afraid? Like, can she, you know, can she tell from the way that you are playing as the child? Like, um, does she use that to inform how she interacts with you in the game? Wow, that would be great unfortunately not <laughs> but that's a great idea so she doesn't really have an ai i mean you can ask her anytime um what to do next or what her thoughts are about a special situation or anything like that but she yeah can't really interact with you as a player 
Unfortunately, but it's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe for the sequel. Who knows? <laughs> I would love a sequel. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, Jenny, for you, so basically the, the roles here are different now. Like at Trios, uh, we had the, uh, the, the child as a companion. Here we have a parent as a companion. Uh, how would you rate the uh, impacts on the story with that relationship? So, and the game sounds like a super nice game and I have to play it afterwards. <laughs> so unfortunately, <laughs> I didn't play it. So I have, um, I have to ask you, um, Jessica. So it sounds like she has a big impact, of course, because she is by his side all the time and she's following him into the fantasy adventures, let me call them. Um, is she... Um, also be part in the adventures or more like le let me say more like she's coming with him that he isn't lost um, so so what's the relationship in the let me say in the fantasy world yeah. thing yeah it depends well the first thing is she gives you the book Rakuan that um, opens the door to this other world to this forest so there she is very important without her and without his book there wouldn't be any story to tell <laughs> from the uh, in the game so um, yeah um, and in some parts as I already said it's like yeah she just follows you in other parts um, she plays really a part of or a role of being um, someone who leads you through um, difficult situations and yeah sometimes um, she uh, she makes tea in a very very funny um, environment um, there's a big rosebud um, who throws a tea party and she knows uh, lots of teas and how to make them and um, yeah it's too difficult to um, just sum it up here right now but um, yeah we have parts where she really um, has an important role and some parts where she just accompanies you mm -hmm. thanks Whew. So uh, decision time, I would say. <laughs> so we also, we, we already hear the music, so you feel prepared a little bit. Uh, so um, who wants to start? Alistair, maybe? Yeah, I'll what kick off. Say? I feel really bad about this because this set game sounds absolutely wonderful and she sounds like an absolutely delightful character. Um, so I kind of like, this is coming purely from the you know, player interaction. If I was not judging under player interaction, I would be giving her many more roses because she sounds absolutely delightful, as does the game. Um, unfortunately, from the view of player interaction, which is what I am judging, um, I'm not sort of hearing, you know, much where, you know, the player would make interesting gameplay decisions on account of her presence. Um, although I think the interesting switch between you know, leading and following is quite an interesting one. And I can imagine there being interesting kind of playful stuff going on there. Um, so for me, it's an unfortunate uh, one rose, um, but uh, I, I genuinely feel really bad about that. That's okay. <laughs> Let's give you this one rose. <laughs> um, Jenny. So, I would say after you told us so many nice things about her, I would give her three roses because she really sounds like she has an impact, but I'm not sure if the impact is really big as the Atreus one. So that's why I give her a three. Yeah. Three roses. And uh, Christopher, what Well, it's a mother. I already created a headcanon where I'm having an affair as, as an, as an um, doctor in the hospital <laughs> and we're going to save together the child so it's working. I would give her four roses. Sure. Ta <laughs> and Jessica. Yeah, I will also give her four roses because uh, she's not only an emotional support for boy, but um, um, yeah. Later on in the game, also, she was an emotional support for me somehow. <laughs> so, yeah, four roses for me. Okay, full roses. Yay. Yay, nice. Okay, so uh, 
before that we asked the uh, audience if they can name some really annoying things do we have something which is really annoying yeah many things oh, actually many things. Oh, thanks God. to <laughs> our audience uh, they are typing many answers like standing in my damn way is pretty annoying and the most annoying thing can also be when they walk too slowly and when they're having a bad moral compass or when they tell you how to go on sometimes it's cool and other times you're still just looking for hidden secrets and it's also annoying when they force you to continue the journey but you just want to look around exploring the game world or when they are running away or throwing themselves at the enemy wh while I'm still in <laughs> stealth mode. <laughs> and oh, right. yeah, right, you, we can, I think we are all can re uh, apply to that, to relate to that. And so we uh, also have the even more annoying point is when they repeat the same sentence to make you follow them. We all know that. Mm. And what uh, also has been hated in world of warcraft as uh, as a hunter when the pet is just running straight into the enemy cause of bad pathfinding so yes. i guess we mm -hmm. can relate to this annoying things oh wow so uh, so much comments there's barely anything to add uh, if you have something to add can you do it in one word it's a challenge pulling new challenge pulling doing mm. i hate it when they try to do it for me that's more than one word, but yes. <laughs> yeah, it's put hyphens between it. <laughs> Locking doorways. Oh, yes. Lydia. <laughs> oh, that's good. One word, yeah. Um, all right, okay, let's continue. Uh, do, do we have one more question for the audience? Oh, yes, the, the last uh, question for the audience would be, uh, did you ever dream about a companion why so then we're going <laughs> to the uh, last uh, last of your character <coughs> again uh, we're going to the last of your characters so let's see who our fourth character will be <laughs> so right here we have uh, tia from the game lufia um, there are some other titles for that game, which is also very interesting. Uh, but uh, Tia basically is a shopkeeper and she can give you potions and magic spells and stuff like this. But later on, uh, she notices, oh, wow, you're going out to save the world. You probably can't do that alone. No, actually, really, I have to go with you. And uh, she decides to go with you. And uh, she's a, like magic powerhouse. Uh, she can do like anything you want. You don't have to... Uh, buy all this uh, stuff from here uh, from her anymore and uh, she's a real strong uh, business kind of woman she uh, um, is traveling this uh, typical fantasy world then with you um, comments your bad ideas you're having uh, and she really doesn't cry <laughs> so um, Christopher that sounds yes. like, a, like a like a very dramatic character Yes, absolutely. It's my nomination, and uh, it's it's a deep cut. It's from a from a '90s SNES era JRPG, Lufia Lufia Two in the US. I guess Alistair, I don't know where you're actually from, but uh, it's the second Lufia in the US and the first Lufia in in, in Germany. Yeah, and it's 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 a very good. It's a very good um, JRPG with a lot of tropes like usually because you need tropes and this is a great part about uh the RPGs because every char character is the same in every game and you always know which one is which but she's different because um she's your, your, your typical magic wielding uh, healer and um everything you need at the start but she does something which is very dramatic she's gonna leave the party and never come back halfway through the game because she doesn't really it's a bit complicated on the one hand she's you she's your best friend from childhood and um she's she know spoiler alert do you know you're gonna die at the end and she can't handle that and she won't handle that and she's very ticked off that you don't listen to her and she decides it's not her journey anymore and she leaves and this is a there's this is a trope I have played so many uh, fair share of JRPGs and 
oftentimes there are characters who leave the party for different reasons but the reason of okay no this is not my journey anymore and what you're doing is madness um i'm going to save myself and leave the party it's it's very good agency it's a very good character and it's she was my favorite character and in the middle of the game when your favorite character leaves and never come back and can do whatever you want uh this is the most dramatic thing you can have this can happen mm -hmm. like a lot of people uh have the feeling with uh final fantasy 7 and no uh, tell me what she's called that's important final fantasy 7 is very small to the you nobody knows that but there's also a character who dies who's what, what's her name arius i guess well yeah. we all people know this feeling she got killed well, it's the same feeling, but as a character, it made the decision uh, to leave. And yes, it's most it's, it's very dramatic, and she's she's just a feminist icon. I have to say that, like she don't need no man. She's yeah, gonna make your own journey. And um, so, when a character leaves in the middle of the story, or you know, dur during the story, uh, is it still a story impact, Jenny? Um, I would say yes. Um, another example is um, um, Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons. I think even when they're leaving or they're dying can be having a really huge impact. And um, I didn't play that game, but a few friends of mine. And um, I asked them because I know they are told me much about it. And um, I think they told me the same thing as Christopher did, so it was really heartbreaking. And um, I think it can be having a huge impact because you maybe will remember her better than other characters that are just by your side all the time, but not having a big impact and just being there in the end and you even don't remember their names, you know? So I think um, those characters can be having a huge story impact even when they are not reaching the end. Mm. And um, Alistair, having this mechanic that you you know normally have to buy stuff, and then when you know this character better, suddenly you get things for free. Uh, what do you mm. say about that? I mean, I think it's it's an interesting twist. I mean, when you were talking about her as the you know shop character, I was thinking, okay, you know, sh you know, the shops in video games are basically vending machines in a world with infinite money. You know, I don't usually find shopping that interesting although i do find being low on items is interesting because that's when you have to make a choice you know if you've only got one potion how do you use it um but i think like the thing i mean the thing that's really interesting here and um is like you know the fact that she leaves the party during the game and um from a gameplay perspective you know i haven't played this game but i am curious to know you know is she conspicuous by her absence do you find yourself going, oh, there's a bunch of stuff I used to do to get through these battles or something that I can now no longer do, and now I have to totally rethink how I play? Is that something that happens? No, no. Actually, uh, um, there's there's a copy copy of her who uh, okay. is, is, is a similar <laughs> similar set of skills. There's a different equipment. They have to save her now. No, no. The thing is, you've bought very important equipment only she can use the whip and the frying pan and selena right. that bitch can't use that and now you have to play with her and she has a different hair color and it's very different like right very different it like the same no it's gameplay wise not it's you have a magic user less than before and yeah. um but i actually think they have the same same um, set of skills okay so and uh, Jessica, you know this is a character you grow up with uh, during the time you know as a child, and uh, probably there's a very long story going on in this game, and then she leaves. So that's uh, like a could be bad for emotional support, I guess. Yeah, it's really hard to judge, um, to be honest, because sometimes it can also be important to make your point clear that the other person is doing something like really stupid and that you won't support that person in yeah doing this um but yeah as you already said it sounds quite radical <laughs> and um i have a question like does this behavior somehow 
impact you or your choices or thoughts as a player? Like, does it make you think um, and question your behavior? Or is it just like, oh God, why is she leaving uh, or whatever? I mean, um, the player as I, the player, or mm -hmm. the, the character? I, yeah, yeah. I was very impacted by that. Mm -hmm. I actually created with RPG Maker 2000 uh, sequels of this game where the tire is the protagonist oh. <laughs> so it's like it was very very um heartbreaking for me wow. um, and yeah. the main character in the game does it impact i mean it sounds I, like you don't don't have any choice than continuing this path but no no you yes i i, I actually can't remember i remember she, she um, actually won't show up until the end and then in the end there's a great montage of all the characters who were part of the journey. Um, I don't know if she's uh, if she, in which way she's mentioned again. Mm -hmm. There's not, it's, it's, it's not a lot of um, decision making when it comes to, to dialogue or something. So it's very linear in this, okay. in, in the yeah. storytelling Thanks. area. Whew. Wow. Uh, okay, so this is a very dramatic character, and uh, we already have a very dramatic time now because it's decision time. Uh, time for your verdicts. Um, there's the music. All right. So, yeah, we talked about a character who is leaving the party and leaving the story like this. So Jenny, what would you say? Yeah, I think it's, this is the toughest one because I gave the ice climber. To, um, two, and I think the impact here is is bigger, of course. So I have to give her a three, but I'm not sure, as sure <laughs> as uh, in the other ones. So, but yeah, to be fair, I give her a three, three but otherwise I would have give her two. <laughs> two and a half. <laughs> yeah, that's not possible. <laughs> no, that's not possible. I would do the same. I would also give two and a half roses. <laughs> now we have to decide. It's a difficult time, you know. You can hear from the music. <laughs> yeah. Well, then I go for two roses. So then we have like two and a yeah. half. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Two roses for you. And Alistair, play interaction, buying. Yeah. Oh, I'm. Oh, this free. isn't. Yeah. No, this is. This is frustrating. And maybe you know. I, so I haven't played this game and maybe I would feel different if I had played it and, you know, played with my own thumbs. But I was really excited to find out, you know, what the, what the gameplay impact is of, of no longer having this character in your party. And then when I found out the impact was not very much, I was kind of disappointed. <laughs> so I'm afraid it's uh, one rose from me. That's fine because it's six roses for me. So um, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> no, it's four. It's four roses. Uh, it's most dramatic ever. Sure. Ever. <laughs> like. Okay. Um, and before we get to the last character, uh, we had also the last question for the audience. Uh, did you ever dream about a companion, and why? Do we have some answers? Uh huh. Right. Oh God. <laughs> I always love the shopkeeper in Resident Evil 4 when he's coming around like, do you want to buy something? <laughs> yeah, that's a character I dreamt about <laughs> a lot, but not <laughs> in a good way. It was terrifying. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, wh what about you? In one word, a character you dreamt about? I can't do it in one word. Okay. Morrigan? 
<laughs> Morrigan. I. Do you say Morrigan? Here from Dragon Age. I had a dream where I was inside Echo the Dolphin and I had two <laughs> dolphin bodies with me and the three of us, we were three dolphins swimming around. The problem with Echo the Dolphin dreams, if you've ever played Echo the mm -hmm. Dolphin, you might know, Echo the Dolphin dreams turn into Echo the Dolf Dolphin nightmares so fast. Yeah. Oof, like dolphins do. <laughs> <laughs> but sounds like a fun dream, though. Oh, it was awesome until it got scary. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any any other dream stories you want to share real quick? No. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, let's continue with uh, our final character. So this is one of the characters we had in the um, gallery. And uh, yeah, let, let's see it. And we'll discuss it a lot quicker than the other ones. <laughs> right. Sorry. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Lydia from uh, The Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim, uh, of, uh, of course, is a very known character. It's the uh, first side character you get, or the, the first companion you get uh, with, the, with the first big mission. And uh, it's really fun because uh, she's basically your guard and helps you um, doing stuff. And she's very, you know, um, eager to do all those uh, things. She's always coming up to you and like, oh, I want to carry your burdens. And then you can uh, put all your inventory stuff you don't like on her. Uh, you can also dress her uh, and, and give her weapons she then can use. And uh, even if she falls down a very long cliff, she's probably coming back to you. And uh, yeah, does all those things. And is a very, very uh, good companion gameplay-wise, I think. But maybe because of that also, uh, not the best, in, you know, story-wise or drama-wise or with emotional support. So, what do you say? Um, let's go with story first, because so Jenny, what, what do you say? Story impact of Lydia. So I would say the story impact from her to me. So to me as Jenny, as a player, Jenny <laughs> was really big because I really liked her and I hated it when she died or the horses died. Then I had to save and save and save and save and try to fight again without her dying. Sure. So on the on, uh, other hand, um, she was super annoying for me, for my story progress because she died often, <laughs> super often. And um, she was running. I think all those things that people told us they hate so running somewhere or just be i don't know stuck some somewhere she did everything to me um so that's the story impact of me but i think the story impact of the whole skyrim story isn't there to be honest it's not really there it's just her small quest in the beginning and then that's it yeah and uh, Jessica, what would you say about the emotional support? I may have to add, uh, this is also a character which is um, possible to marry and then she's staying at your house and cooking meals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One yeah, right. Each day. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do that and I just remember her blocking any doorways. Um, so right. you might say she is an emotional support in regard to um, like helping you to get angry and in a fighting mode or <laughs> fighting mood. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but otherwise, um, I don't think that she yeah, is a very good companion in emotional right. support. <laughs> uh, but play in the action must be great, right, Alyssa? I mean, with the inventory, you know, drop everything you have and, and you, you double the inventory you have. That's cool, right? I haven't played any skyrim so I, i'll need your help on this i need to know yeah what what does lydia do for me if i'm a player what does lydia enable me to do that i was not able to do before well she can carry your things <laughs> and she's also quite okay at fighting stuff mm -hmm. um she's not dying in battles i guess right she, she's so dying from other things she like is. she is Huh, maybe I played it on I easy. <laughs> <laughs> she, I, I just had to reload when she was uh, falling down a cliff and then it takes forever until she gets back. <laughs> so from a gameplay perspective, now's where I ask the question, you know, if 
if she can carry more stuff for you, what is the difference between her and, say, a bigger rucksack or, you know... Ah, be because she can use this stuff sometimes, right? So if you, okay. you, you, you put, like, uh, an armor in her inventory, then she may uh, use it. Mm. Okay. And she can talk, of course. That's right. also a difference. And a backpack doesn't block any doorways. Oh, uh, you should see my flat. Um, it's a <laughs> massive fire <Okay>. hazard. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess the other question I have from a gameplay perspective is if she is fighting with you, you know, um, is there a sense, and, and I feel like this is a massive bugbear for me, but is there ever a sense that she is doing the fun part for you? Nah, if anything, if she makes it more funny because, you know, when, you, when you're trying to sneak, she's always standing and doing stuff for her. <laughs> she's quite not getting the situations, mostly. <laughs> okay. And do you kind of, do you give her, like, commands? Do you ask her to do things? Do you, uh, um... But she just kind of goes on her own thing and yeah. you kind of have to work around that. Yeah. I yeah. see. So so you can send her away, of course. And then she's waiting for you uh, on the, I don't, I think it's the first big city. Um, yeah. But otherwise, hmm. 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 I think the, the she can fight and you can just, you know, at Skyrim, you can just, go on a rock and wait <laughs> that's what i did you know in the five, first minutes when i came out just arrows shooting and after an hour you you killed the first really fantastic big monster you never did before because you just cheated a little bit and i th think you can make the same things with her but uh, you have to be careful that she isn't dying right <laughs> so so drama wise christopher <laughs> Well, I have to admit, I haven't played Skyrim. I haven't played Skyrim 2. Like, how? Skyrim isn't released on any platform existing. So I, <laughs> like, I never, I, I can't, I didn't. But what I'm hearing, what I loved, what I'm hearing is you can marry her. <clears throat> and there's permadeath. So it's thematic. Yeah, I love it. What I hated is you said, well, she's carrying your stuff. And she's cooking for you and she's waiting for you and we have already the, again this this typecast uh female character who's just an accessoire but i don't like so the main the, so for my head canon which gender do i have uh, as a player in skyrim can i choose that can i make yeah yes. basically yeah. so something... i can just make very clear yeah. and, fantasies and, marry, and she's yeah. just my whole, yeah. home, home wife and we have a very we're mm -hmm. living as a queer uh, alternative fantasy. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So this works. And then we have the saturnative fantasy because everything outside is burning down. So we need this. This She's making the house. Yeah, this works. This kind of works. Yeah. So, but it's okay. not very emotional in the game. Like you marry her and then she's in your house. It's, it's have to be emotional in my in yeah, my head. Yeah, that's... If I can uh, yeah, imagine yeah. Then we are on the same page. But, yeah. the, but the marriage can be <laughs> super <laughs> emotional. So so I had this character, like, uh, I, I wanted to marry her because she uh, had some special stuff. And then in the last moment, you know, there was a marriage already going on. I decided differently and I walked out in the marriage. And everybody in this village, or at least in this church, uh, they were bad at me. No. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. I did that. Oh, good oh. you. <laughs> oh, can I give you roses? This is very, very <laughs> Okay, decision time. <laughs> so, oh, let, I hope go. you don't do this in real life. <laughs> no, of course not. I said, uh, I said yes to my girlfriend um, in the uh, previous place, in play uh, 19. Oh. Yes. I was there. Yes. <laughs> okay, was Rose. Very yeah, very dramatic. Uh, Christopher. Um, drama how much drama does uh, yeah i think there's bring? potential again i have to play it but i think there's a potential for a uh, headcanon fan fiction and everything in between so i give it three roses three roses for you and jessica what would you say how much well one rose from me she isn't really an emotional support <laughs> all right one rose. and jenny i uh, also one and Edison. So, yeah, at first I wasn't thinking it was uh, massively interesting, <laughs> but then once you started talking about all the different ways she can get in your way and how you, ha as a player, you have to mitigate that, 
Whether that was the intention of the game or not, that sounds fascinating to me. So, like, if if the game hasn't made been made yet where that is the main point of the game, is to try and mitigate this kind of annoying AI that keeps on getting in the way, then it needs to be made. But, you know... There's one, that... Duhu. Sorry. There is one. Oh, even better. <laughs> so on that merit, it's a, it's three flowers from me. Um, like, I... That sounds really exciting. All right. Ta-da. Three for you. All right. And uh, with that, we are at the end. And uh, we have a, a little screen prepared with all the names we had until now. Um, so that's all the names. Um, and uh, yeah, do, do, do you feel the impact of the discussion we had? Totally. Uh, and do you do, do you remember which characters we rated? How much? Hopefully, yeah. hopefully we remember. <laughs> I think I. I think I. So, I think so I maybe it's not just uh, <laughs> big of a surprise <laughs> then. Um, uh, yeah, but still, you know, let's let's see some uh, results. So, so Nana uh, was quite an interesting uh, character, a couple character which you can play. Um, how many roses did Nana get? We will see. Okay. <laughs> I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, that's that's uh, that's quite a lot. It should be nine, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Atreus, in my feeling, was rated a little bit higher. So, how many roses did Atreus get? Oh, <laughs> that's a little bit more. <laughs> okay. And uh, Mom was also a very interesting uh, character, uh, also a parent character. It's interesting that we have two uh, parent-kids relationships in here at all. So let's see how Mom was rated. It's a little bit more. <laughs> so it could be only higher now. So I'm standing in the way. <laughs> <laughs> You're like Lydia, somehow. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tia, how many roses do we have for Tia? Oh, I didn't have to go this far away. <laughs> <laughs> so, and uh, the final character, Lydia. Uh, how many roses do we get here? Ah. So, I would say we have a very clear winner, which is... Oh. <laughs> Nice. Moms so, are always the best. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> congratulations, <laughs> mom, for being placed next top companion. And uh, oh, wow. thank you for you, of course. <laughs> Very interesting perspective. And yeah, I would say we, we, we break this up now with, you know, the wall. Let's turn down this wall and uh, go to <laughs> our play village. Uh, so with all the things we uh, discussed now, you know, with your expertise, like uh, gameplay into well, uh, in general interaction with this character, um, the story impact, the emotional support, and the drama, are those categories you think would be also quite fitting for rating real life companionships? I feel like gameplay interaction, honestly, like if Let's I go was with to judge. Edge. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think there is something meaningful to say for, and this sounds kind of bleak, but you know, what would the, the impact of them not be there, being there be? You know, what do they allow me to do? So when I was, you know, I, I, the idea of friends and companions as as helpers, as people who, you know, that help you achieve your goals or do your, you know, brightest most brilliant things i think that's a really nice thing i was a little worried it was going to sound a bit like you're kind of like using them like tools but the more i speak of it it's like no no to be a good player interaction friends is to help help each other out yeah that's that's very nice actually that fits <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Jenny, what would you say about you? You know, you have a life story, so there should be somebody who is, you know, I don't know, impacting your story. Maybe is that something you 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 look uh, for in other real life people if they could influence your story, or is that something 
which you would love to be more in control of yourself? Mm, I would say no. So because I'm someone who's always looking for role models and they influenced my life, of course. And even let me say things like today, you know, meeting new people, finding out new ways of thinking, of seeing things, of learning something. And I think everything we do has to be something between people, between humans, but also between uh, like, let me say um, animal companionships, like when you have a cat or a dog or no, you know what I mean. So I think they are all are part of our story and that's how it is to be human. And I think that's something really beautiful. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And emotional support, I mean, uh, of course, that's something we look out for, right? Exactly. I don't think I have to elaborate on that yeah. a lot. <laughs> But drama on the other side? Well, it, it, it depends how you define drama. I think um, the world is dramatic enough. So maybe maybe it's very good to have very not dramatic friends and to chill and... Uh, play video games together that's a very good friendship it's also a very good friendship to to steal a car and run <laughs> off a cliff i also can see that like like don't do that but in, like do that like this <laughs> uh, choose your friend that's, yeah yeah that's that's it's it's whatever you want you do you like this, i yeah. don't know yes please be very dramatic and don't and um <laughs> I mean, I said that in the beginning, I'm not looking for friends, I'm looking for lovers. So maybe it's more about that. So, right. so please choose your friends who are not dramatic and choose very fiery dramatic lovers. So only kissing and running cars and yeah, that, like that's my, <laughs> la this is my ending words. All right. <laughs> Not quite, though. Uh, there's one okay. more question we have. So um, we looked at a lot of uh, virtual companions now, and uh, I guess you also have uh, quite a history of playing with virtual characters. Um, how do you think uh, does this knowledge or, or those experience transfer to the to the real world? Is, is there something uh, where you could say, okay, this is the one thing, you know, so, uh, where you say oh, this is something Uh, I learned in real life, or I learned in a computer game, in a companionship there, which I could um, use in a real-world companionship. Or, you know, just life in general, maybe. I think, like, from a... And, and, I'm, and I'm staying in the kind of gameplay perspective, because this is... We are all playing in the game of life. Um, but certainly all those, you know, companions... You know, let's let's take Nana, you know? Nana is there. Nana is trying to help you out as your ice climber, but she's not always going to be there. And she might, you know, not catch up with you fast enough to save you from getting hurt or something, or, you know. Um, and, you know, all these AI characters, you know, like Lydia, who, you know, walks into, walks into enemy fire, whatever. Um, sometimes things don't go the way you expect them to you know sometimes the way you think the world is supposed to work let's look at these companions as you know digital things rather than as simulations of people sometimes you know the world around us doesn't work the way that we want it to but life is about you know getting on in spite of that and and i think that's something that you know that that companions and games and you know particularly ones with bad ai have taught me is you make do and you just get on in spite of the challenges nice who wants to follow up <laughs> <laughs> oh wow yeah. but but jessica uh, I, i'm pretty sure there's something you can say about the topic <laughs> of course the psychologist always knows yes. all of the answers <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately not but um yeah i once again thought about mom and about um how she yeah supported her child of course but um i think you can um, use that on any other relationship as well um even in times where it was very difficult for herself so um i don't want to give away the ending but um yeah it 
yeah also gets hard for her and um she still supports her child in yeah on his way um even though it's very difficult for her and yeah that's something um that really yeah impacted me and made me cry mm. like a thousand times before in that game but <laughs> yeah okay lots so of impact Mm -hmm. so maybe i can jump up on the topic because i i thought about mom <laughs> and then i thought about that dragon cancer but you don't have mm -hmm. a companion there but what i learned from games like this in general is to talk about those topics because i and let me say someone in my family was really sick and died because of cancer and that wasn't because it wasn't it was so hard for me i don't wanted to talk about it with other people But then the other people felt like something isn't right. And I told them, no, I don't want to talk about it. And I I made the mistake. It was a good one. So let's play the game, even when it's a hard game. And then in the end, I started crying. The first time ever on, let me say, on camera. And I just skipped the, oh my God, that's intimidating thing and just talked about it. And since then I learned just to talk about it. And I think that's something yeah that I learned from games like this. And yeah, that's impact that's full really on beautiful. even on wow. personal story wise. So hmm. thanks for sharing. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's not it's not a nice topic, I know, but yeah. Not an important one. Yeah. Yes. I mean, yeah, I mean, transferring com virtual companionships to real one, of course, there are stories like this supposed to happen. Um, and how do you transfer the, the drama, Christopher? Uh, no, no, this, this, this uh, drama bites my ass. Um, yes, yeah, sure. Um, I mean, <laughs> I mean, this is maybe it's, it's when we talk about e escapism which is a great word to pronounce. Um, we, there's a, a feeling what we have, what I have a lot in this romantic world is that I don't have control about anything. And everything about me gets destroyed and gets broken up and gets changed and I can't control it. And in games, it's it's opposite, and I can control it, and I can decide what gets destroyed and what gets built up, and what's what are the rules, and I can change them, and I can can do that. And maybe, maybe it's an, it's it's this is the moment where playing video games to to cool down and to get away from all the drama for a moment to get back on the fighting horse and be back in the real world and say, okay, well. If I can can save the world there, I can save the world here. I don't know if this works, well, but maybe maybe this is a, the the key ingredient for saving the world is that we need to save more worlds in video games to get more ideas to save the world in real. Nice, like that, so, like <laughs> yeah. Okay. Period. Wow. Uh, so. Thanks for sharing all those stories and uh, very much thanks for your companionship in this evening uh, by selecting place next top uh, uh, companion. Um, so it was a great, a great evening with you. Um, and I hope uh, we see each other again soon, maybe in the Play Valley uh, or in some other uh, program we have planned at play. So. Um, Let's wave goodbye. <laughs> bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks for everything. <laughs> bye, bye. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. So, uh, with that, the uh, show is ended. There is a buy screen, I uh, guess, <laughs> which we can show now. <laughs> so, but you can wave all the time again uh, if, if you want. <laughs> can keep waving. Uh, so, um, Yes, uh, that's it. Uh, very insightful. Uh, thanks for everyone again. Um, tomorrow, there's also a very great program uh, what we're having. We have the uh, eSports trainer Black Gator telling us about his uh, work. Uh, there is the Speakers Corner again with uh, lots of interesting topics you should uh, join in. And we have uh, Markus Richter with an impulse, uh, which is called The Kids mm -hmm. Are All Right. And he's talking about how to get through the pandemic with Truck Simulator. That sounds very interesting. If you have any more companions to add, you can still do that at the Forest of Companionship in the Play Valley and uh, in general 
always go to the Play Valley and check out all the amazing games, connect with the people there, find your new companionships, uh, play some games with them and uh, maybe make some friends in real life afterwards. So uh, that's it from the studio. Uh, see you back tomorrow. Bye bye.